James Stewart as the Six Shooter. The man in the saddle is angular and long-legged. His skin is sun-dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl. The handle unmarked. But the gun has killed and the man has killed. People call them both the six-shooter. Presenting one of the screen's favorite stars, Mr. James Stewart as the six-shooter. Based on the timeless legend of Britt Ponsett, the Texas plainsman who brought single-handed justice to the Western Territories. I had figured on going through Clay City. Uh, it was an hour out of my way, and I was already a day late to the Jefferson Ranch where I'd signed on for the roundup. But when Scar started limping from a loose shoe, didn't have no choice. We had to head for the nearest blacksmith shop, so we turned north. losing a show. Well, let's have a look. All right, raise it up, fella. Come on, come on, boy. Yeah. Split, mister. He needs a new one. Okay, boy. Can you take care of it? Oh, sure. Bring him over here. Hey, uh, what happened to Red, the fella used to own this shop? Went to Nevada chasing silver. I bought him out. Oh, I... Yeah, you, you don't look very much like a blacksmith. Huh? Oh, I'm stronger than I look. Heavier, too. What do you think I weigh, mister? Oh, I don't know. Go on, go on. Take a guess. 120? 30? Mm, well, no more than that. You a betting man, mister? Oh, well, sometimes. Well, I say I weigh over 130. If I don't, you get the new shoe for nothing. If I do, you pay me double. What do you say? Uh, you got a set of scales? Don't need no scales. What do you say, mister? Is it a bet? <laughs> well, don't seem to be no way of proving it. Oh, all you got to do is lift me up. Now, you look like a man who can judge weight. What do you say? <laughs> okay, all right. It's a bet. All right, mister. Just heist me. If you don't think I weigh more than 130, the shoe is free. <laughs> all right. I, I never tried to judge a man's weight before, but all right. There, there we go. <laughs> well? Oh, I'll be dog. Uh, I'm packed solid, mister. Real solid. Now, you're packed tighter than a steer. Hey, you must weigh 150 pounds. Yeah, you see? You see? What did I tell you? 158. <laughs> the horseshoe's gonna cost you money, mister, but you ain't the only one. Ever since I bought the shop, there ain't been a stranger come through Clay City but what he paid double for his first horseshoe. <laughs> you ain't sore, mister. No, no, that was a fair bet. Sure it was. I told you I was heavier than I look. That's what folks call me, Heavy Norton. My real name's George, but everybody calls me Heavy. Hey, what's your name, mister? Ponsett. Britt Ponsett. <laughs> Fella, they call the Six Shooter? Well, doggone it. I've heard about you, mister. I've sure heard about you. <laughs> oh, I would have recognized you if I'd have noticed your gun. Sure is fancy, ain't it? Hey, do you mind uh, showing it to me? No, no. Here, catch. Hey, real fancy. Just like Sheriff Schofield said. He says he's seen you fire six shots with it while Whitey Jackson was getting off his first bullet. That time down at Eagle. Well, the sheriff kind of likes to build up a story. Oh, he swears it's the truth. Here's your gun, Mr. Ponsett. Thanks. Sure, sure. You was mighty quick in getting into Clay City. Uh, how'd you hear about it so fast? Mm, well, I'd hear about what? The holdup at the Fargo station last night. Is that why you come? Nope. No. I was headed past town. I turned off because Scar got that loose shoe. Well, now, ain't that a coincidence? A fellow holds up the Fargo office, kills one man, maybe two, gets away with $5,000, and 12 hours later, you ride into town. Well, they got any idea who did it? Nope, not a single solitary one, from, from what I hear. Like I say, the deputy agent was dead when they found him. Other fella, Fred Wilmer, a friend of his, got shot up pretty bad. Ain't done no talking yet. Doc says maybe he never will. Did Sheriff Schofield take out a posse? Nope, ain't nobody to go. Most of the men signed up for the Jefferson Roundup. Left town day before yesterday. Here the Jefferson Ranch is paying good money this year. Yeah, yeah. 
You uh, seen the sheriff this morning? No, not lately. It might be over to his office. Uh, I think I'll walk down that way while you're fixing up Scar. Sure, sure, Mr. Ponsett. That's a darn good idea. Sheriff Schofield will be real glad to see you. A couple of doors this side of the sheriff's office, I saw the Wells Fargo sign nailed up next to a window. The place wasn't locked, so I went inside. One of the chairs was upset, and there was some damp stains on the floor. The cast iron safe against the wall was standing wide open, so I kicked it shut. Went out in the back stoop. There was some more blood on the steps, and then just red mud. Right at the edge, I saw the hoof prints. They trailed off along the side of the creek. Whoever made them headed west. The horse had been wearing one shoe different from the other three. A, a, a sharp rock must have cut into it sometime or another. Not enough to split it, you understand. Just enough so that the print left a jagged line, like, so like fancy handwriting. Find something, Britt? Hmm? Oh, oh, hello, Sheriff. Ah, it's heading your way. Yeah, I just saw Heavy. He told me you was in town. Did you find something? I don't know. I don't know. You see these hoof prints? Yeah. Uh-huh. Don't mean nothing. The trail gives out a mile or so down the creek at Fork. Uh-huh. Has Clay City had any other trouble lately, Ed? No, not a bit. I guess any town's got to expect to hold up once in a while. Though. No, I heard it was a little more than that. Yeah, that's right. Fred Wilmer able to talk yet? Afraid not. Doc said he'd let me know first thing he'd come around. Took him out to his ranch. You've been out there to see him since last time? Wasn't no reason. Well, it might be a good idea to be there, you know, just in case. Was... Thought maybe I ought to stick in town. Oh, I don't think anything more is going to happen here, Ed. I'll get Scar and I'll meet you out at Fred's place. Huh? I can handle this alone, Britt. Oh, sure, sure. I'll just offer to keep you company, Ed. I'll meet you there. He's all fixed up, Mr. Ponsett. Tied him up around the side so he'd be in the shade. Thanks, Harry. Thank uh, you. Did you find uh, Sheriff Schofield? I-, I told him he was in town. Yeah. You figure out anything? Uh, not so far. Oh, you will. Sheriff's a good man. Why, you and him together, you'll get whoever done it. Well, maybe so. Maybe so. You're the only blacksmith round here, ain't you, Heavy? Only one for 40 miles. Uh-huh. You ever see a horse with a shoe that's got one jagged edge, left hind leg? A lot of shoes got jagged edges, Mr. Ponsett. Yeah, but I'll, I'll show you what I mean. I ain't much of an artist. Now, here, it it, uh, it kind of looks a little like this. Hmm. Seems to me I seen a shoe like that just the other day. Uh, oh, sure, I remember. Told him he ought to get a new one for it. Ben Schofield, that's who it was, just the other day. Ben? Yeah, the sheriff's kid. You know him, don't you, Mr. Ponsett? Oh, sure. Sure, I ain't seen Ben in a couple of years, though. Oh, you wouldn't recognize him if you did. He just sort of growed up overnight. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he has. Well, that ends the first act of the six-shooter, folks. Hope you're enjoying the show. Before we get on with it, I'd like to tell you a little bit about how I happen to be doing this program. I've uh, been lucky enough to do quite a bit of radio acting before, but I've never had a program of my own. The right thing just didn't seem to come along, at least not until the six-shooter. You see, I've made several stories of this kind for pictures. That is, honest, legitimate stories of the West, and... I hope that this series can offer the same type of enjoyment with the same integrity. We think it's the sort of program the whole family will enjoy, and we think that the character of Britt Ponset typifies some of the greatness that built America. We'd be pleased if you agreed with us. And now, Act Two of The Six Shooter, starring Jimmy Stewart. Uh, 
Sheriff Schofield was sitting on Fred Wilmer's porch swing when I got there. The doc was inside with Fred, so I squatted down on the stoop and waited. About half an hour, the doc came out and told us we could go inside and see Fred. Fred was lying on a cot, breathing hard, and a white cloth across his chest was stained pink, and his voice sounded like it was full of air. He was just sitting in the express office talking, Sam and me. Didn't hear the back door open. Must have left it unlocked. Turned around and there he was, holding his gun on. <laughs> Did you get a look at him, Fred? Handkerchief over his face, Sheriff. I couldn't see nothing. Just the gun. They told Sam to open the safe. There wasn't nothing else he could do. Sure, sure. He took the money, walked over to the door. Yeah. Looked at us for a minute, and then shot. He didn't have no reason. He hit Sam in the face and he hit me in the chest. He didn't have no reason. Ah, <laughs> uh, take it easy, Fred. Take it easy now. <laughs> Just like he enjoyed shooting at us. That's how it was like he enjoyed it. Maybe he was scared. Oh, he wasn't scared, Sheriff. He didn't have no reason. Thought he killed us both. Then he started down the steps. I got my hand on the shotgun and let him have it. You hit him? I don't know. Maybe he gave a yell and rode off. Uh, what kind of a fellow was he? He was young, old? I couldn't see his face. Young fellow, I'd say, though. How young? Oh, 17, 18, full grown. Be tall, short? Medium. About the size of your kid, Ed. <laughs> About that size. Got enough for you, Ed? Yeah, that's enough. You you think you'll get him, Brad? Sure, Fred. Sure. Sure. Come on, Ed. Didn't have no reason to shoot, no reason. Come on. Wasting our time, Brett. He's got a day's head start. He'd be 40 miles from here. Well, not if he shot up. Now, you go on if you want to. Well, you're the sheriff. You've got to make the arrest. You ain't never been so particular before. Well, maybe not, but this time I'm particular. Are you coming? We don't even know where to start. Oh, I thought along the creek. That's as good a place as any other. It's a waste of time, Brett. Oh, we got time to waste. Come on, let's go. We picked up the trail along the creek and headed west. It wasn't hard to fall on. Every once in a while, we'd see a few drops of blood spattered against the shrub brush. About ten minutes later, we came to a fork where Ed had said the trail gave out. Scar stuck his nose down into the water, and I looked around. The trail didn't give out. It turned south. I nodded in that direction. Ed didn't say a thing. Just followed at about five o'clock, we stopped to eat. Elle built a fire, and I opened up a couple of cans of beans I had in my roll. Are oh, you ain't hungry, Ed? It's early for supper. Yeah, yeah. Ed, I talked to Heavy before I went out to Fred's place. I asked him who had a horse that would leave a mark like the one we'd been following. So? And he said Ben did. Your son, Ben. I thought you ought to know that. A lot of horseshoes leave the same kind of mark. Fred said it was a young fellow. It wasn't Ben. Where is he, Ed? Jefferson's Ranch, working on a roundup. He left Clay City the day before yesterday. Couldn't be Ben. There's a lot of wild youngsters in these parts, but Ben's a good boy. Couldn't be him. You sure? That mark don't mean nothing. Plenty of horseshoes leave the same kind of mark. You know that, Brick. You had enough to eat? Yeah. Come on, let's go. Not real bright, but enough so you 
could follow the trail. For about three miles, there wasn't no blood. He must have wrapped something around the wound. Wrapped it real tight. And then we found the bandage. A piece of shirt tail sopped through. For the next mile, I'd been bleeding a lot, worse than ever. He was hit pretty bad. Looks like it. He couldn't have gone much further because... I... Oh. Hold it, Scar. Ed. Yeah. Hold on. Over there in the gully, that cabin. Yeah. Whose is it? Used to belong to Jake Levant. Died a couple of years ago. Ain't nobody living there now. There's somebody living there. Huh? Out and back. There's a pony. Better go ahead on foot. Yeah. We're going to take him alive, ain't we? If we can. We've got to take him alive, Britt. It's bad. I don't know, Britt. Not for sure. It could be bad? It could be. Where have you been the last couple of days? I don't know that neither. Had an argument with him two nights ago. He needed some money. He'd been playing poker and lost a lot. Well, Five thousand is a lot. I wouldn't give him money. Got mad, said he'd get it, said he'd get it himself. And I hit him hard across the face. I hit him twice. He started to hit me back. Then he walked out of the house. I ain't seen him since. I wish he had hit me back. Now, we got to get across that clearing, Ed. Over to that clump of trees. He may see us. Yeah, we'll have to take that chance. You ready? Yeah. All right? Sure. I'll stay in these trees for a couple of minutes. Okay. Then we'll rush him. Ain't gonna be easy to take him, Ed. Now that he's spotted us. You ain't gonna kill him, Brett. I ain't gonna let him kill me. It ain't his fault, Brett. It's mine. You know that ain't so. No, it's the truth. It's my fault. You didn't raise him to be a killer, Ed. Maybe I did, Brett. I was the sheriff, seeing that everybody kept close to the line, seeing that everybody lived honest, especially Ben. I broke him, Brett. Broke him like you break a wild horse or try to take all the fight out of him fast. You know what happens when you do that to a horse? He gets tame, but the fight still there, and someday he turns wild again. I'll rush him alone, Ed. No. Stay here, Brick. Oh, Sam Norton's dead. Maybe Fred Miller, too. Killing Ben won't bring him back. He's my son, Britt, my only son. You don't have no kids. You don't know. I'm sorry, Ed. No, we're going back to town. Not without him. We're going back. Now, you can outdraw me, Brett, but I'll still have time to get a shot off. I'll try to get him alive, Ed. I'll try. No, don't turn your back on me, Brett. Don't be a fool. Don't make me do it, Brett. If I wasn't being brave, I knew he wouldn't shoot. A man like Ed Schofield just don't change overnight. You can figure a man like Ed. That's what I thought, anyway. But I hadn't figured what would happen next. I haven't figured on him running out into the clearing, standing there in the moonlight, gray against the black sky. Ben! It's me, Ben, you dad! Can you hear me, Ben? Brett Ponson's coming after you. Throw out your gun, Ben! Brett Ponson's coming! Now listen to me, Ben! It's your dad! I saw him go down, real slow, like his legs had buckled under him. I couldn't tell how bad he'd been hit. He rolled down a gully out of, out of range, and I crawled forward. I pushed myself past a couple of rocks and head toward the back door. The kid was in the kitchen. I couldn't see him, but I could hear him moving around, going from window to window, looking out, waiting for me. I slid past another rock. I could run to the door or wait. The kid made up my mind for me. I slipped down fast, and the bullets nicked the rocks. The kid had good hearing. He knew I was right there. I took out my gun and waited. I knew he'd get nervous first. Young fellas always do. I wasn't so young. I could wait. It was more than five minutes before the door started opening. His pony knew I was coming, too. He started for the horse. I aimed at his leg. For a second, he stopped moving and just hung in midair like a hawk. 
and he sprawled forward out of sight behind a log. I raised up a little and hunched myself along the side of the cabin. Everything was quiet now. Even his pony. The moon went behind a thick cloud and I came around the corner of the cabin. Suddenly the moon came out again, just in time for me to see his forty-five. Just in time to see him coming up over the top of the log. His revolver slipped out of his fingers and I saw him trying to reach for it again. He couldn't make it. I stood up and walked over to the log. The kid was lying face down, gasping for breath, a little short gasps. He pulled himself up under the flat of his hands and then he passed out. I turned him over with my foot and I looked at his face. Ed? Over here. Where'd he get you? In the shoulder. I'm gonna be all right. Britt, is he... Did you have to... He ain't dead. Thanks. I guess he didn't hear me calling to him. He didn't know who I was. Ed. What? Ed, it ain't Ben. What? It ain't Ben, Ed. You, you sure, Britt? Yeah, yeah, this kid's got red hair. There ain't no reason to lie to me, Britt. I ain't shot up bad. No, I ain't lying. I ain't lying. I knew it wasn't Ben while I was growing up after him. I knew it. Well, what are you talking about? Hey, just come to me. A man don't change overnight. Neither does a boy. Well, if it ain't Ben... It... Uh, lots of tough kids in these parts. You said so yourself. Where do you suppose Ben is? Where you said, Jefferson Ranch, working the roundup. They pay good. No. A boy don't change overnight, Ed. <laughs> you able to ride back to town? Yeah, sure. I may have to take it a little slow. I'll get the kid. Britt. Yeah? You know something, Britt? I couldn't believe it was Ben neither. Not when he shot me. I just couldn't believe it. You know that, Britt. I know it, Ed. I know it. Well, that was your first meeting with Britt Ponset. I hope you'd like to meet him again every week. <laughs>